In our continuing attempt to find the words to express the inexpressible, we called Robert Pinsky, who was the United States Poet Laureate from 1997 to 2000. He originated the Favorite Poem Project and edited the book America's Favorite Poems. We called him at his home in Boston. This is a poem that a friend sent me. It's Mark Strand's um, translation of a poem by the Brazilian poet Carlos Drummond de Andrade. And uh, it's a poem that catches the feeling that normal life has been broached so that it's remote. It's, it's like antiquity to have a normal life with normal concerns. The poem is called Souvenir of the Ancient World. Clara strolled in the garden with the children. The sky was green over the grass. The water was golden under the bridges. Other elements were blue and rose and orange. A policeman smiled. Bicycles passed. A girl stepped onto the lawn to catch a bird. The whole world, Germany, China, all was quiet around Clara. The children looked at the sky. It was not forbidden. Mouth, nose, eyes were open. There was no danger. What Clara feared were the flu, the heat, the insects. Clara feared missing the 11 o'clock trolley, waiting for letters slow to arrive, not always being able to wear a new dress. But she strolled in the garden in the morning. They had gardens. They had mornings in those days. That's a great poem. Can you say more about where where the poet is from? Andrade is a great national poet of Brazil. Mm. He's the only poet I know of who has not just his picture on a banknote, but a whole poem. One of the common uh, uh, pieces of currency in Brazil has a whole poem by De Andrade on it. Robert, to what extent have you been going about you know normal life and 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 how much has what you've been doing just day to day really been changed? Well. I uh, I was on what I thought was a two-day trip to Los Angeles. I went out on Sunday um, on United Flight 175, in fact, and uh, I was supposed to come back home to Boston on Tuesday. And I got up in the morning and at around 5 to catch an early flight and turn on the television to get the weather in Boston and uh, I saw the image of the trade, the, 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 the tower smoking. It was actually before the second plane hit the second tower, which happened while I was watching television. And then I had four days of, like many, many people in the country who were traveling, I had four days of suspended animation um, waiting to get home. Uh, separated from my family and uh, seeing these images of horror unfolding and uh, I was just uh, all the different degrees and kinds of disruption from the very worst to being stuck someplace that you don't want to be uh, that was the context of life for quite a while and I feel in a way as if it still is well, the funny thing is, you're about to fly again because you're in the middle of a of a speaking and reading tour. Yeah, I uh, I have obligations. Um, I've said I'm going to show up certain places, and uh, after thinking about it a while, I said I am going to show up at some. So, how do you feel about going back in the air again? Um, I'm. I, I, I guess I'm with those who say it's never been safer to be in an airplane because everyone is so conscious of security. Uh, I came back to Boston by way of Cleveland, got home Sunday night, and uh, I was reassured to have a nail file confiscated when they went through my briefcase <laughs> in security. I thought that was wonderful. So um, I'm, uh, I'm aware that my family and friends would rather not know anybody who is flying, but I know a lot of people who have business reasons or personal reasons to fly, and it doesn't I'm not nervous about it. Robert, would you read another poem for us? Um, this is um, a very dark poem, uh, and it's one of the mysteries of poetry, I guess, maybe of art, that 
there's a kind of comfort in having absolute loss and things that are completely dire articulated. Uh, this is Edwin Arlington Robinson's poem, The House on the Hill. The House on the Hill. They are all gone away. The house is shut and still. There is nothing more to say. Through broken walls and gray, the winds blow bleak and shrill. They are all gone away. Nor is there one today to speak them good or ill. There is nothing more to say. Why is it then we stray around that shrunken sill? They are all gone away. And our poor fancy play for them is wasted skill. There is nothing more to say. There is ruin and decay in the house on the hill. They are all gone away. There is nothing more to say. How did you first find that poem? It's a poem I've known for many years. I remember my wife once wrote a paper about it when she was in college. And um, my friend, the fiction writer, Leslie Epstein, uh, sent me and some other friends uh, a group of things he had read that seemed relevant to him. And uh, that reminded me of this Robinson poem, which is a very beautiful, though very bleak poem. Have you been feeling more like writing poetry or just reading it? I have not felt like writing. I have written prose sort of to myself. Uh, like many of us, I was reassured by work. I wrote a book review while I was stranded in my hotel in Los Angeles. I, I wrote a review of Alan Dugan's wonderful new book of new and, new and complete poems. Um... I would love to be the kind of person who responds immediately with eloquence or penetration. I'm not. I tend to write about things after they've happened by quite a long time, and uh, I tend to sneak up on things rather than approach them directly. So it would be deeply uncharacteristic for me to um, take the emotions I'm feeling and uh, articulate them. In some ways, I suppose I'm an easy talker and glib in other ways, uh, I am not comfortable with the first or second or third thought about a thing. I'm not comfortable with the idea that poetry is therapeutic. I think it's something, its comforts are more oblique and complicated like that. You know, poetry is often a lot more like the moon than like the sun. You know, it's kind of reflective and uh, partial and deeply idiosyncratic. You know, each person is different, and I think poetry being a, a vocal art in each person's voice emphasizes that it's not like a brass band. Nothing against brass bands. <laughs> uh, I thought when the brass band uh, at Buckingham Palace, the Coldstream Guards, when they play the Star Spangled Banner, I was quite moved by it. But that and the immediacy of television are different and have a different role than the role of poetry. Well, Robert Pinsky, I wish you the best and good travels on your reading tour, and I thank you very much for choosing some poems for us today. Thank you, Terry. Robert Pinsky is our former poet laureate. His latest collection of poems is called Jersey Rain. It's called Jersey Rain. It's called Jersey Rain.